<clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Oh, do, do take a moment to put your name on the list, if you would, if you're here. Curious, does, uh, considering what today is, anybody have any stories uh, that they wouldn't mind sharing as an antidote? Anecdote. Nobody fell for any April Fools today. Well, I had to think for a few seconds, like what's what's special about today? <laughs> Time's running so fast, then realize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of the April Fool's uh, jokes get so subtle that um, I was sitting there reviewing um, a PR earlier today. The This particular contributor does this, like, you know, is one of those engineers that actually enjoys documenting and like writing things down. And it's, it's a, what a lovely thing. And so consistently this, this contributor will um, take a, well, usually like it's an animated GIF sort of demonstrating the function or the thing that's changed. And, and this time I sat there looking at it and finally figured out it's just a static screenshot. So it took me uh, about 10 seconds of sort of waiting for it to start. And then and I thought, and then I wasn't sure if this is a really subtle uh, April Fool's thing happening or so. It's about as, it's about as interesting as my April Fool's gets, I guess. We're five after. Uh, we've got Mr. Owens with us, uh, Mr. Blake, whose last name, despite how long I've known Blake, I'm still not. Uh... Blake, can, can you give it to me uh, one time, if you would? Yeah, sorry, I've got a little background noise. Uh, it's Blake Covarubias. Covarubias, yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Rav is here, Mr. Farrell, uh, Mr. Ranganath, and... Yuri, Mr. T. Yeah, cool. Good. And Mr. Bell as well. Good deal. All right, we're, we're five after. Um, does, of the topics that we have listed, does anyone see items that we're missing today? So if you do, please pop them in. Um, I anticipate we'll... Well, that we'll have, so just as a brief overview of the agenda, we'll have at least probably half of our time for um, Yuri to take us through KGB. Um, before that, we'll cover um, some service, service mesh working group topics. There are a number of people who sent regrets today. So, so we, we sort of cut down the agenda um, fairly quickly to start off with um, Get Nighthawk. There are, uh, I think all, all the votes are in, in terms of those who, or I guess if, I guess if you're on the call and you haven't taken a look at, if you don't, aren't familiar with this project, please go take a minute. Um, if you haven't, whether you're familiar with the project or not, if you wanna just uh, make a remark or a vote on the logo for it, please do. Um, indecision is, awful. Um, and so the I'll give a project progress update on behalf of a couple of the contributors of the project. Um, and Vinayak is here with us now. So he might have um, another portion to this update. There's been uh, been progress on the um, build of Nighthawk for um, for a binary that's uh, compatible with the base image that's used for the Meshery project. Um, those builds take a, a couple of hours in GitHub, ac or there's a custom GitHub action that's been written now. I think those builds take a couple of hours in part because of all that's included, um, all of Envoy's tool chain that's included for those builds. Um, there'd been a recent um, uh, contributor, um, Jubril, Jubril, are, are you on? Nope. Uh, there been a recent contributor that had uh, was 
to try to figure out if they could get Nighthawk on Alpine. And so we don't have, I'm unqualified to speak to that. So, and Jubil isn't here. So uh, the last item as an update on Get Nighthawk is, well, we have a few of these today, but a maintainer nomination. And I, for my part, I had intended to get to this uh, a bit earlier. And that is to get, get an email out um, about, in this case, about Vinayak Sharma. So Mr. Sharma, just to um, embarrass you a little bit, um, your, your stewardship of the project site uh, and how you've been giving, um, accepting PRs and giving direction to, I don't know, about five others. Um, and that, that work doesn't go unnoticed. Um, I think you've shown um, great, great intentions towards the project. Um, the site's coming along nicely. Um, you've, um, you have my, my vote, or I'd like to, to put you up for maintainership for, for nomination. And I think we'll, we'll get an email out on the mailing list about that. So now is the moment that uh, you should speak your piece um, and, uh, and get out of this if, if this isn't something that you want. Speak now or forever, hold your peace. Yeah, I could. Yeah, thank you again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vinayak Sharma and uh, uh, from the last uh, one month or a little bit more than that, I have been uh, working on the Get Night Hawk website and uh, collaborating with a few other uh, contributors. And uh, it would be uh, great to get nominated as a maintainer for that project as well. Good, good. Your, your indentured servitude will start soon, ho hopefully. So. <laughs> 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 you don't um, have to ask us twice. <laughs> um, but that's fantastic. Good, 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 good. Service mesh performance. So the next um, project to, to rehash, um, service mesh performance, and we'll just cover meshery in the same swoop. And that is both of those two projects have been being advanced through the service mesh working group. Um, they're both submitted for, uh, proposed for, uh, thanks to Ken and um, Sunku. Um, they've both been um, submitted for sandbox consideration this last go round, which was, a f well, it got rescheduled. It was a few days ago. It was supposed to be a few days before that, I think. Um, we only, the TOC only made it so far down that list. Um, if you're on the TOC mailing list, you've seen kind of how far down the, um, they got. They got past KAGB. So Yuri will, I won't steal thunder here, but we'll, we'll, you'll talk about that. Um, and so those two projects are up for review next time round. Usually that's a two month um, split or two month gap. In this case, um, it's a month out. Uh, so for service mesh performance though, as it's, um, as the contributorship and the maintainership has grown or it is growing, there's been, and as, as it's being proposed for adoption, there's been, um, well, a, a, a more concisely articulated roadmap. And I wanted to, to bring this up as hopefully just a point of discussion and feedback. There's a, I think there's an open pull request on it to, uh, on the roadmap here to co correct a couple of things. I'm, I'm going to let this uh, settle in if those that are interested, those that are familiar with the project could think on this for a minute and express opinion about how this won the yeah. breakdown. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks Lee, uh, for this, uh, for adding me to review this. So I think it's a really good start uh, as to uh, dividing into um, in terms of spec or publication, participation, research, um, it covers uh, different areas in terms of roadmap. Uh, so do I, I do have a few items uh, we could add. Uh, so I think some of them are being captured in the, the proposal, uh, SMP sandbox proposal. Uh, we could also add it here uh, in terms of roadmap. Uh, uh, for example, uh, some of the load generation aspects or uh, 
uh, running the uh, performance aspects across a distributed cluster for north-south tra uh, type of traffic or so east-west type of traffic scenarios. Uh, right? So there's some more details that could be added there. Uh, and also the, um, I think one of the aspects the SMB side talks about is Meshmark, uh, right? So that, that's another thing we could add here. Um, internally, we've been doing some work uh, to kind of provide uh, um, in its effectiveness of a service mesh. Uh, so yeah, so pretty much uh, at some point, uh, once we have some definition there, I, I'd be happy to share um, as we go forward. Yeah, some of these things could be added here. Um, yeah, I think I'd definitely uh, take a look at this a little bit more and uh, provide an update to this. Excellent. I missed it. Do, do you recall what the first one of the items that you had said was? It was, um... uh, yeah, the aspects that are in the proposal, sandbox proposal, I think we could add them here. Um, and uh, mesh mark was another thing. Um, yeah, performance analysis. Yeah. Nice. Oops. Yep. And, and distributed performance analysis kind of being Okay, very good, very good. Yeah, sure. I think that it, it does touch upon the distributed performance analysis. Maybe we could um, uh, specify some more details along those lines uh, to uh, not just have a um, you know, broad uh, charter, but uh, specify some more details so it's very much clear as to where this is headed. Very good. Maybe if it helps, we could divide this into short term, medium term type of goals too. Uh, maybe if it helps for someone new looking at uh, some of these things, um, uh, they would come in and say, okay, short term, if this is what you're focusing on, maybe I could help you out, uh, along those lines. Wonderful. There's an, uh, as you, as this gets flushed out a bit, kind of around goals and, and scope, there is fodder for consideration. Um, in the, the slides here, there's a slide on, well, it's called distributed performance analysis. I, um, maybe it's not just that slide, maybe it's one or more of these here, but uh, it, might, it might be that, or th these may or may not be helpful, I guess. It's, 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 it's worth pointing out. Definitely, yeah. Uh, it'd be good to look at the existing material and see uh, what we can add here. One item, um, Sunku, that, that I'm, I'm just reminded of um, in looking at and thinking about research is, um, yeah, how we're being your assistants and specific and, and others that might be interested. Um, Ken has actually brought forth some of this as well, is, um, so we've got a, we were able to meet with uh, Anirud, the professor of, at NYU, and we didn't get to, the last time that we got together, we didn't get to include um, Mohit uh, of NITK, but, uh, but I'm glad that you're here focusing because some of your help in managing those relationships and keeping them fresh and sort of uh, having a consist consistent kind of cadence to those interactions will be I think is, it um, will be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. I um, think uh, one of the previous calls had uh, even asked about it. Right? So yeah, happy to help in this regard. One item that's, it's a bit of an action item. It, it's, um, well, does, let me ask um, you all if this makes sense. So the you know the the service mesh working group um, has and ha had has a number of you know small initiatives that have uh, been growing and growing, and some of those like SMP growing enough that they're kind of you know that they're as big as it is now. Um, do like e even as we go to and, and so by the way the next topic here is to, about maintainer nominations and, and Sunku um, being being one of those. Um, it strikes me that the we can send out that type of a nomination on the service mesh working group mailer that that's entirely appropriate and probably should be done but also that there's a domain name associated with or like the, the there aren't other mailing lists specific to the project and so um 
guess I bring it up as like food for thought on, you know, do, does the creation of a couple of those make some sense as well? Or maybe there's just not enough traffic here anyway. So, so maybe. Right. Uh, yeah, I was thinking uh, that too. So maybe um, I think the new newly created uh, service mesh work group uh, domain, uh, it's a good start. Uh, but I think as we have a lot more traffic there, we can subdivide into either for Meshri or SMP or um, at night hawk, some of these initiatives. Get the uh, on the on the CNCF list, but uh, yeah. So while we are on this topic, uh, one thing I had uh, shared Lee was there were a couple of volunteers to uh, yeah. interested to um, uh, get started on this. Um, so is, is there any info? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, so um, yeah, Sinku, thanks, thanks for asking. There's a couple of uh, there's a couple of contributors well, or people who'd been interested for some time and had thought one of them, both of them had really studied uh, some of the goals around Meshmark and SMP. Um, one of them had studied a bit more deeply around Nighthawk and it's kind of, kind of around Get Nighthawk. It's, it's all sort of intertwined some. Um, the, the two gentlemen are, um, one, I'll write their names down. I'll make, I'll make an introduction. Um, I had recent, I think I'd recently sent them both the draft of what that roadmap looked like because they were in part uh, I was letting them know hey steam is building steam is building it's about time to to jump in and, and because they'll, they'll need some they'll need your guidance <laughs> they'll need some guidance and it'll be your guidance uh, one of them is his name's Chanika I'm misspelling it and the other one um, the other one done some um, Linux kernel work uh, around networking um, Nisarg, um, introduction is going you, you know, immediately. There's no. Um, I think they'll they'll have questions. They'll have questions that you can help answer, and, and I can help answer as well around. Um, you know, or, or I'll I'll send you some of their questions. I mean, they'll they're going to want to you know scope of scope of scope of the goals, scope of the work. How closely can they they engage? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Happy to help. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, yep. Yeah. So then I, I sort of informally said that um, there'll be a couple of other nominations. So Sunku Ranganath on uh, SMP as a maintainer, um, Nick Jackson, um, who's been, uh, well, he's been on this call a number of times, but he's long been a supporter of um, SMP and um, Helped shaped a few of the well, a few of the the initial roadmap items actually around open application model and SMI, and how these three specs, OM, SMP, and SMI, uh, line up. So, um, and then um, Otto Vandersha is um, quite keen on the spec. Uh, he and Jacob Mum have been or Jacob Sovum, I'm sorry, I'm calling him by his GitHub name, uh, of Google, uh, Otto of Red Hat, Jacob of Google, have long been, also been very supportive of SMP um, to the extent that um, something like SMP marries up nicely with their focus on Nighthawk. And so uh, we'd like to invite and nominate um, Otto for maintainership as well, so. Yeah, thank you, actually, Lee. Uh, I wasn't, um, uh, pre prepared already for this, but uh, thanks for putting my name in. Uh, yeah, happy to help you. Uh, soon could be to be for, to be uh, very candid. Here. Like actually, it's um, because of your assistance specifically that it's given enough um, uh, forward forward momentum to like to make this into what it should be. So, so yeah, um, it's um, great. Okay. It's good. So yeah. Very good. All right. A uh, couple of SIG network topic. Any last thoughts, questions? Just get Nighthawk SP measure. Some SIG network topic. So, unless I'm mistaken, um, Ambassador or the project formerly known as Ambassador um, Emissary Ingress 
believe that it's still out for review. Can anyone correct me on that? I, I don't think that it's a, um, a, um, adoption at incubation level has been, yeah. Other reviews that are open is Linkerd's uh, up for graduation. Its review is in process. Uh, William Morgan, who was on last time, has been really helpful with uh, lots of data, lots of helping with um, making sure the write-up is getting complete. He's been so helpful that I've heard from him almost every day. <laughs> He's, uh, that team is ready for um, you know, public review. And so the, the SIG review, um, Ken, um, uh, the draft of it will be in your inbox later today for your um, input, feedback, approval, disapproval. No problem. Uh, and th that leaves us with Yuri. Um, KGB, Yuri. Um, there was, I, I, gotta, I guess I, I, I got to say this, there was another, was it, was it Yelp? Yet another load balancer that was sort of also up for sandbox review this last go round? Uh, yeah, statement. but I'm not sure if it was uh, focused on GSLB. So it's uh, our focus is global load balancing specifically. Sure. Totally. Well, Yuri, with that, let, let me stop sharing. I'm, uh, today you're going to give a presentation of the project. Can I cool. uh, introduce it to everyone? Right. Hi, guys. I'm Yuri. I work as principal engineer for APSA. And let me share uh, my screen. Uh, do you see? Uh, my screen, guys, everything good? Cool. Yeah, so I tend to keep a, like a minimal, uh, sorry for that, uh, minimal am amount of slides and uh, just to provide a context and then we go right to the live demo. So uh, KGB was originated in APSA as a uh, totally open source project from day zero. And uh, uh, the idea behind it is to create cloud native global service load balancing solution. Uh, why we needed it is pretty much our business needs because uh, so APSA, first of all, it's financial organization, which serves uh, African continent. Uh, uh, it's a South African bank, pretty much. And the usual deployment pattern is to uh, uh, at least two geographical dispersed clusters, uh, data centers. And uh, <clears throat> to achieve uh, uh, reliability and, and uh, uh, availability for uh, financial applications. Uh, and given that uh, a substantial amount of workloads uh, are already running on top of Kubernetes, we needed something to enable glo global, uh, uh, global uh, service load balancing like Kubernetes, uh, 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 Kubernetes way and cloud native way. So we didn't find any kind of uh, uh, proper solutions that work for us, being vendor or open source. So that's why we uh, decided to uh, develop something uh, on our own uh, using operator pattern. So we basically created a pair of a Kubernetes controller and associated custom resource definition to solve the problem. Uh, one of the things that differentiated us uh, from existing Thing, solution is also uh, uh, absence of a single point of failure. So we do not have anything, any instance that uh, uh, passing a traffic through itself, it just doesn't exist. And we do not have any form of control cluster. So there is no uh, single point of failure or any form of bottleneck. The controller and operator uh, is getting deployed uh, right to the target, target clusters where work, workloads are running. Uh, so with that in mind, we heavily uh, utilizing the actual standard Kubernetes primitives that are running uh, in the cluster. So it's a uh, like standard ingresses, Kubernetes service uh, endpoints, and uh, everything is getting drilled down to the pods and associated pod props. Uh, so it gives uh, application teams uh, power uh, and uh, over the global load balancing strategy control and actual health checks that are uh, uh, effectively running from uh, within a cluster in a, in a form of standard pod, pod liveness or readiness props. Uh, so we intentionally do not have any kind of standard 
load balancing HTTP end-to-end -end checks. We, the, good, uh, the load balancing solutions KGB is aware of internal workload cluster state, and that's how it reacts uh, to the workload healthiness or uh, or not healthiness uh, and uh, steers the traffic according to the load balancing strategy. So reacting the, on the uh, uh, pod status and uh, again, application teams uh, have uh, all flexibility to define uh, these props as detailed as uh, they want. So uh, specific to the applications. And uh, the Traffic steering itself is based on DNS, which is kind of battle tested by internet, uh, and we are benefiting from uh, protocol reliability. And obviously, we have some limitations uh, around DNS. We, uh, the most prom prominent one is a uh, time to leave, right? Uh, TTL and how fast and users, uh, customers uh, are getting the updates. Uh, we will see it in the demo. And uh, solution is designed the way that is as much a wire diagnostic as possible, meaning that uh, we do not create uh, DNS records in a environment DNS like Route 53 or like in prem we using info blocks or NS1, whatever. Uh, we are uh, only automatically configuring DNS zone delegation, uh, which points and uh, 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 redirects the, the DNS queries uh, down to uh, our uh, Core DNS pods, which are integral part of KGB. So we are answering to DNS queries with our uh, DNS responses that are um, dynamically modified according to the global, uh, global load balancing strategy and the associated workload healthiness. So from implementation standpoint, we based our uh, solution initially bootstrap by operator framework. And uh, we uh, following the uh, recent uh, uh, upgrades and trying to keep up with the project. So uh, we actually like uh, <coughs> uh, switched to, uh, we started, I think, with the release 0 0.6, where it was uh, quite a little bit disconnected from KubeBuilder. Now it's pure KubeBuilder and giant with something on top. And we migrated to the uh, recent version and try to uh, keep up with upstream uh, with uh, like uh, at least minus one release. Uh, core DNS is a very important part of KGB, so that's exactly the part that uh, uh, provides the DNS responses. External DNS is used to integrate with this uh, uh, environment uh, uh, DNS in your infrastructure. So like Route 53, if you're in AWS, is one of uh, good examples of that. So that's exactly the part that automatically uh, configures a zone delegation and uh, pretty much does nothing else. Uh, but it probably uh, we benefiting from external DNS, uh, given it has uh, uh, quite a good number of uh, uh, DNS providers out of the box. And we used to have special CD dedicated cluster and CD operator to uh, to act as a backend for core DNS, but we deprecated it uh, by developing a special core DNS plugin, uh, which is capable to read a DNS endpoint CRD uh, right from uh, like uh, right from Kubernetes at city, like uh, through Kubernetes API, instead of uh, using uh, standard backend uh, for at city cluster, which is SkyDNS. So uh, it, uh, we used to have quite an amount of uh, reliability problems uh, with the at city based setup and at city operator from core DNS originally, it's already deprecated. So we invested in uh, developing this special plugin uh, uh, and uh, uh, KGB currently consists of just three co components, a controller, core DNS, and external DNS, made it, uh, making it uh, the whole setup much more reliable. And uh, uh, this project drives only single CRD of kind GSLB, and that's it. So uh, we try to keep uh, things as simple as possible from a management perspective. So from integration with other projects, so we call it Edge DNS, this environment one. So we tested uh, heavily, uh, like uh, InfoBlocks and Route 53, they should be production ready. NS1 is already well, very well tested. We just uh, do not use it yet on you know, like uh, our scale, but all the tests are passing. And again, uh, potentially works for other providers, but, but that external DNS uh, provides. 
uh, but uh, we heavily tested only these three. And uh, there are another projects, uh, open source projects that we integrated with, and Admiralty is one of the good examples where Admiralty is used for a, uh, global uh, workload scheduling uh, across the multiple clusters, and KGB uh, uh, is enabling global uh, load balancing for these uh, global workloads. So we have a nice tutorial there on the Admiralty uh, uh, project page. Yeah, and uh, we can get straight to the demo, but uh, uh, before that, just to uh, provide a context on the demo setup. So I'm on a KGB IO page. We have some architectural diagrams there. And uh, um, we will operate in this demo at two clusters, two AWS EKS clusters, basically one in Europe, another one in Africa. And it's a pretty standard setup for us. Uh, um, it's important to, to uh, emphasize on the fact that we have like this uh, environment. Uh, DNS provider, so RAT53 in uh, AWS example, KGB is getting deployed right to the uh, clusters where uh, next to the actual workloads and uh, it uh, controller gets the information transitively through ingress, then service, uh, endpoints and uh, end pods. So uh, that's pretty much it up to two data centers and uh, in AWS uh, uh, terms, it's to the AWS regions. And that's where we start our demos. Uh, so any questions so far before I start? Or, or I can just- uh, Yuri, I have a, go uh, yeah. Yeah. something of an ignoramus question. Um, and that is, uh, uh, yeah, well, is, is, is that is, hmm. I guess, like the like, the, you like, there's no uh, the geolocation of a given service. This is like the, the primary factor that you're using there are DNS zones, right? Like, the from the perspective of a client looking to get to a service and uh, the path that they follow as um, as they initiate a DNS request, um, like, uh, is, it, is that primarily um, zones that are being used for that and, and the affiliation of services to a given DNS zone? Uh, yeah, uh, it's not a, so DNS zone is the same. So everything uh, like uh, is behind the same FQDN. So, uh, well, basically, I maybe can start a demo to answer, to unpack the answer for a question. So, uh, in the right plane, we will run a test script, uh, which is basically doing this stuff, like curling the test application. So, we already have uh, KGB installed on two clusters and a test, uh, test workload. And the workload is a standard test application from Viewworks, pretty popular one. It's PodInfo. And we detect uh, uh, each deployment uh, as, uh, as associated with geographical location, just for visibility, right? What we are querying. So currently, we are testing the failover strategy, where we have a primary uh, uh, data center pinned in Europe and a secondary one in Africa. So how it looks like from a uh, uh, setup standpoint. So let's check uh, where we are now. So we can see that we are, are in Europe by this uh, information from node. We have a KGB uh, already installed. So we have exactly these three components, KGB, operator controller itself, which drives all the logic like orchestrating it. Coordinates uh, uh, to handle the DNS uh, queries and responses. And external DNS, uh, <clears throat> this one is special for Route 53, uh, which is deployed according to the Helm uh, values configuration. And it is handling this uh, as on delegation automatically. So we have a testing workload in a test JSLB namespace, and we can get uh, pods quickly. So it's just a couple of pods running. Uh, we have associated service 
And most importantly, we have our GSOB special resource. Uh, so I think uh, it makes sense to start with uh, spec definition. Sorry, it, it was a uh, Helm Wallis YAML spec definition is there. So our um, API group uh, for KGB, uh, kind GSLB, standard uh, metadata, and what we are doing here. We have uh, uh, embedded ingress spec as a part of GSLB spec. So uh, it's a pretty standard ingress with specifying host and, and associated service, right? Mm, port and pass. So uh, it's uh, uh, actually it's the same ingress uh, type in a uh, Golang uh, behind the scenes, right? So we just embed it into this uh, just to be uh, instance. Uh, so controller reacts to it, cre cre creates uh, associated ingress for global load balancing and uh, uh, makes additional and it performs additional actions according to the strategy. So it's composed, uh, composes, the spec is composed of the standard ingress plus uh, GSLB strategy to follow. So in this specific case, we uh, we have a failover strategy and we are pinning primary ge geographical tech to be EU West one. That's, uh, this uh, uh, GSLB is already deployed uh, here. Uh, as a test GSLB failover, and we can see at runtime uh, what kind of status does it have. So, as you can see, exactly the same spec. Uh, and uh, here we, we have a current cluster geotech and a healthy record. So, it identifies the healthiness of the, of the workload. Again, transitively through the service and a, and a number of endpoints. So basically, it's again the state of uh, uh, pot uh, liveness and healthiness props. And it populates DNS, uh, DNS record uh, with, uh, let's, let's say, healthy IP addresses. So uh, there is additional kind of internal DNS endpoints here, uh, which we, uh, we are using. Uh, this uh, is the CRD from external DNS project mm, from the uh, CRD source. So if we get the YAML here, so you can see that failover is populated with this IP addresses and uh, according as given it uh, uh, has our special CRD plugin, it is capable to read from this CRD and uh, uh, actually responds uh, to DNS query according to this, uh, to the configuration specified in DNS endpoint. And DNS endpoint CRD is dynamically populated by controller. So what are these IPs? So in our uh, AWS scenario, we have uh, a network load balancer, like a local load balancer uh, in, uh, which is uh, sits in front of the workload. So it's like standard ingress and jinx deployed here in test setup. And we have this um, uh, associated NLB deployed. So if you make a dig to this NLB, that's exactly um, these three IP addresses. So we are, popular, we are uh, uh, assuming the workload is healthy, we are uh, populating DNS uh, response with a uh, healthy um, network load balancer IP addresses associated with the workload. So uh, exactly the same setup uh, is in Africa. So same number of nodes uh, and uh, exactly the same spec uh, for uh, for JSLB for failover. So we do not uh, modify anything. We just uh, applying the same spec on a, another cluster without any modification. So, and uh, another secondary cluster also aware that primary is a uh, Ebro. So uh, it is 
returning uh, consistent responses. So it returns also uh, IP addresses for European data centers now because the workload there is healthy. So let's uh, try to emulate uh, some form of uh, workload failure. So we again in Europe and let's uh, just scale the test uh, workload to zero replicas. So pretty standard way to replicate something in Kubernetes. A form of uh, workload being done. Yeah, so everything is terminating. We can uh, get the status. It's already on Kelsey. And you can see it's already returns another set of IP addresses. It's the one for NLB in Africa. And you can see some 503 there. That's why we are still hitting the old endpoint and we are operating with the DNS TTL limits. And currently TTL is 30 seconds plus some like deviation with a, uh, as we just associated to reconciliation loop. And here we already see a switch. So there was, in case of failover, there is small downtime. And now uh, we are already steering traffic to Africa because um, uh, 30 seconds TTL is expired. And uh, uh, we are already querying the healthy workload in a secondary data center. So it all happened automatically. Yeah, and we can scale it back. The workloads are uh, executed again, and we can check status. Already healthy, already has a uh, IP addresses of Europe. And you can see in this demo querying uh, loop that it's already failed over back to, uh, to Europe. So there is no downtime because uh, the workload in Africa and secondary was always healthy. Uh, so that's uh, another use case how um, uh, we can um, steer the traffic in a controlled way if you, if you like to. So see, I've seen teams were doing like a manual, uh, 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 manual pin of the main data center from one to another. So actually making some form of global blue green. That was another unexpected use case of KGB that we've seen from uh, end users. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's the pretty much failover uh, strategy. And we have uh, second one is round robin, which is uh, just, uh, yeah, it's demonstrated, this um, spec is just for demonstration purposes to demonstrate different statuses. And this chunk is round robin. And uh, this strategy uh, uh, specifies round robin type. And what it does, it's, uh, it basically returns the mixed response from both, uh, both data centers. So as you can see, it, the response, the DNS response will contain uh, an IP addresses for Europe and IP addresses for Africa and uh, and the response will will mix them up. So if you make a dig, uh, here you go. It's like it's uh, totally mixed uh, mixed response. So we also have a roadmap to make it more consistent to uh, to steer the traffic and run road in a more predictable way, like 50-50. But currently it's a standard, uh, very random round robin over the geographical data centers, and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much two uh, basic uh, strategies that we utilize in APSA and it's enough for our business case. And definitely have some uh, more advanced stuff in our roadmap and trying to gather uh, some feedback from communities. Uh, the next one would be probably something about geographical proximity and uh, this kind of things. 
uh, in this case, we will have to create some advanced uh, for Linux plugins to modify uh, uh, the responses on fly according to, to in the situation. Currently, the controller makes it like a kind of composition way by populating DNS endpoints, CRD, and for uh, very dynamic geographical um, proximity, geographical like location, uh, closest location strategy, we will need to modify it already on like core DNS level. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what else was to mention? Yeah, as uh, uh, Lee mentioned today, uh, on Tuesday, uh, CNCFTUC uh, voted to uh, KGB be accepted uh, as a sandbox project um, um, to CNCF, so we are super happy about it. That's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, so one question, um, uh, thanks for the demo and the information. So in terms of um, load balancing, um, you know, so what are some of the aspects? I know you mentioned about um, uh, failover and reliability aspects. Uh, what are some of the other aspects that um, you know, for incoming traffic that you consider load balancing? Well, uh, we operate now uh, only uh, two factors, uh, underlying pot healthiness uh, of the target workload and uh, the um, load balancing logic, that, that's it. So from, uh, we do not imply any kind of end-to-end uh, -end health checks. It's, uh, it is just uh, uh, readiness and li liveness pod props and they can be as sophisticated as application team wants to be. So that's the whole idea to provide the uh, 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 power and uh, control to application team uh, over the global load balancing for their applications. Yeah, got it. Okay. And, um, and how does uh, something like this uh, coordinate with um, uh, things like API gateways or uh, service meshes? Uh, I'm, I'm relatively new in this area, so I'm just curious how this um, coordinates with the deployments. Yeah, so far we didn't uh, uh, integrate with any uh, form of service mesh, but uh, what uh, um, strategy um, we currently employ is actually, uh, we are relying uh, on a, any, uh, on pretty much on ingress status, right? So we uh, ingress controller agnostic and uh, we are getting these addresses or like a set of IP, uh, 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 address uh, you know, is getting populated by associated uh, ingress controller. So it's imaging, traffic, like whatever, can be potentially some service mesh. Uh, assuming it operates, uh, uh, it controls ingress and doesn't operate purely uh, with uh, some special CRDs, right? So, uh, so currently, like, yeah. You know, in uh, not direct integration point is this, uh, whatever is getting into ingress uh, uh, spec, we maybe better to make it yeah. in the YAML way. Yeah. So whatever is getting in status load balancer ingress, we in host name or uh, alternative version of it is IP address. It is also the case for our on-prem setup. Uh, so it, it's getting, populated into this uh, DNS in endpoint uh, by, by a controller. So this way we can get some information from ingress and, and the KGB will do the associated global DNS response for it. So okay. that, that's, a, that, that's a current, current uh, um, way how it works. Uh, not sure if uh, uh, maybe in future we will extend it to some other CRDs, even we will have some advanced service mesh deployment, but currently uh, we never actually like tested or integrated into more uh, uh, sophisticated from a service mesh endpoint environment. So we definitely open for any kind of ideas in that regards. 
Okay, yeah, thanks. Cool. And Yuri, how do you, uh, mm -hmm. when you're asked, how do you classify the project um, as a, as a, you know, a custom Kubernetes operator or as a custom um, ingress controller? I'm assuming it's the... Uh as an operator, because it, like it's not it's not really ingress controller, right? It's something uh, it, it doesn't uh, uh, it works in combination with ingress controller. It's not ingress controller itself, and it and it doesn't work without an ingress controller. Correct? Exactly, Maybe. exactly. Yeah, ingress controller should be there around. Otherwise, there will be nothing in this uh, status, and there will be no information to populate uh, to DNS record, right? Makes sense. And yeah, you're right. I think as you got, as you mentioned some things, I think maybe some roadmap strategies with respect to mm -hmm. geo proximity, um, mm -hmm. geolocation and some advanced calculations that would probably probably require deep integration into core DNS. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think, I think that was what I was having a really hard time uh, framing a question around earlier was, mm -hmm. um, was those types of strategies. So that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, elegant in terms of, oops, excuse me, elegant in terms of how you're, uh, you know, relying on, and I guess it, it, you, you say it, you stipulate it in your goals. I don't know what point it is, but um, to, to more or less, you know, leverage is, you, you, it's pretty Kubernetes native, or <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, it's the, it's well, it's sort of the answer is whatever the readiness probes and the liveness mm -hmm. probes do, and sort of what you, you know, uh, yeah, done only through an operator. Done so the um, almost all go or like any any material part of the project, anything but go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's purely good. It's purely good length. The only uh, non-go uh, code is like our pretty huge make file, but it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and you guys, the project does have its own Helm chart as well. Yeah, for sure. That's how we actually it, uh, chart uh, uh, is pretty important part of the project because it's not just installation. It uh, also uh, it does also have like uh, important configuration points which affect the uh, load balancing uh, operation further. So we actually tagging. Uh, with initial taking the cluster with initial uh, Helm installation. So we installing uh, this is configuration for US one, right? So we specifying geotech US one, and we specifying the neighbor, uh, the another uh, geotech JSOB enabled clusters that it's going to work with uh, here. And then, like through a convention or a configuration, they started to talk and share information uh, also over DNS. And uh, the similar co configuration is, is for Africa, right? So it's kind of flipped. So it's a cluster geotech. And uh, the another cluster to talk to is, e e e e is Europe. So I already showed to you this DNS and ah, it's actually on the screen. Yeah, uh, we populate the special uh, FQDN kind of service one, which is not exposed to user, but it's just around. So uh, clusters are querying each other uh, for this, uh, this for this special service FQDN, and uh, basically they're asking uh, uh, about the health health status of uh, associated workload under control uh, from another. Um, Cluster. So if we go there, so they just asking each other continuously every reconciliation loop. And uh, uh, for example, in, in case of round broadening strategy, each of the cluster will return all of the IP addresses, right? From uh, both GCLB enabled clusters. And whenever the workload will be dead there, uh, this uh, cluster, uh, whenever uh, workload will be that in Africa, for example, European cluster will uh, learn about this fact uh, through this special uh, FQDN. Uh, and assuming it will be 
totally degraded, like meaning no, no targets, or partially degraded, meaning one or two, instead of like full three in this uh, specific example, it will uh, modify the final uh, response accordingly. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, and then by the, the, the geotag, the, the strings that you're using there, they don't um, they don't have any special, there's no special convention today or it's no, just- No, no, uh, no, it, it can be anything. In this example, we just named it like as a AWS regions, but you can name it uh, whatever you like. Two short question, it might be inappropriate. One uh, first one, uh, it's bivalent or it can be to multiple zones. Uh, can yeah, it go uh, to five zones? This is my actually question. Yeah, that's a great question. Sure. So uh, by design, we are not limiting uh, uh, we are not limiting amount of clusters uh, to operate. So here we have a comma separated list, right? And the round robin already works out of the box, but failover strategy is kind of not really ready. It's kind of work, but the secondary will be not obvious. Uh, so we have actually an issue in our GitHub to test uh, KGB in more uh, more than two uh, cluster deployments uh, to make our um, operation more ready for that scenario. So we tested in production like uh, these two data centers set up heavily. Uh, by design, we are not limited, but it's not really tested well enough at that moment. Yeah, I think you also covered the second question. The second question was the strategy section that you had in your CRD of the, on mm -hmm. the ingress type there. If that is something, whatever plugin or so, or is, is it made by you? And that's the... Uh, from, this chunk. Yeah, yeah, this that. Thing yeah, there. yeah, it's our stuff. It's uh, it's our uh, our custom resource definition, which is uh, so uh, uh, KGB oh, controller. Know. Yeah, re reacts to this CRD uh, uh, custom resource presence in the clusters and uh, uh, creates associated DNS endpoints and ingresses and uh, um, overall automation. Uh, according to the spec, yeah. I'm good. I, I figure it out on the on the first question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Thanks a lot. And uh, maybe while we on the spec, uh, uh, it may be worth to mention that we have a uh, so we operate a single CRD, right? Uh, which is pretty uh, like. Um, convenient way to steer the uh, uh, the traffic. Um, but during adoption in APSA, we realized that even some additional CRD may be like a little bit of overhead for teams, uh, uh, given that they already have the established Helm charts, they like a new type drop-in uh, might be as an overhead. And plus, uh, we, we're pretty on a like pretty reasonable scale. We have more than 120 clusters. So propagating airbag rules there to enabling uh, a new kind, a new APN point for every team. Also a little bit burden for operations team as well. Uh, so we provided a more kind of mm, mm, relaxed way uh, to enable JSLB an alternative fund. So totally not replacing the original uh, JSLB creation. Uh, so, assuming your workload already has standard ingress, uh, you can, uh, and it is most probably the case, you can create the uh, annotations on already existing ingress or like extend uh, your pre existing Helm chart, put the JSLB strategy there, and uh, in case of failovers, it will be a primary geotech. And the controller, and the KGB controller, will react to, to it and will uh, create a, a GSLB resource automatically uh, out of the annotations, and will will we'll just link existing ingress with a uh, with a GSLB type, with a GSLB CR, and we will close the loop this way. So that's another way to enable 
uh, global load balancing for a workload. And it, it helped us with adoptions, internal adoptions heavily. Thanks. Hey, Yuri, as, as we go to wrap up here, um, one item, if you don't mind, um, a link to the roadmap for KGB would be interesting to check out. Yeah, we are keeping it in like a GitHub issues and we have these milestones there. Yeah, so you just write on GitHub. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, if you have a, hmm, okay, yeah, under milestones, under releases, under milestones or. Uh, under GitHub issues and there is milestone section. So let me oh, go. Gotcha. So, so we just keep it simple regarding management. So we have it here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so that the next one is zero eight. So that's a current. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm the closest over there. Yeah. Thank you for this, Yuri. It was nice to yeah. nice to dig in. Uh, kudos on the on the project um, being adopted. This is uh, um, well, Dan, uh, I think uh, Mr. Farrell, Daniel is going to follow closely in your footsteps. I think with uh, Submariner. So. Oh, that sounds cool. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks a bunch, Yuri. Um, th thanks all for coming. Um, we're, we're out of time. Um, catch you in a couple of weeks. Cool. Bye Have all. a great day. Cheers. Bye bye. Later. Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye.